I just wanted to talk to you guys about um, a few things today, and uh, hope, hopefully it's very entertaining and insightful at the same time. So I really want to talk to you guys about baseball and baseball movies. I know it's uh, the World Series. I don't know if there's any Sox or Dodgers fans in the audience. Yeah? Go Red Sox. Um, but, you know, there's a lot that we can learn about baseball and baseball movies, right? So who, who remembers this movie here? It's a Sandlot, right? Great movie. You can learn so much about Sandlot. And I could really take the next 10 minutes just talking about Sandlot. But it's all about um, building and creating these special relationships. Uh, taking a team of, you know, diverse backgrounds of uh, people and really working together for this common goal. And... Um, uh, creating this, com this, this bond that will last a lifetime. And also overcoming one's fears. Bad News Bears. <laughs> a great movie. Uh, again, this is a team that had very little drive. It had very little discipline and direction. And then enter... Whoops, go back. And then enter Mr. Buttermaker. So Mr. Buttermaker was a dysfunctional leader... Uh, he probably wasn't the best guy, uh, but he did something. He, you could even call Mr. Buttermaker a change agent because he was able to go in and really work with this team to change positions up, show them the fundamentals, and also bring in new talent that was needed. And he was also able to establish or, or identify the inner talent of Kelly, the misguided troublemaker that was on the bike. So the, the, at the end of the movie, it's basically about a team that goes from worst to first, and they go on to play for the championship. So the moral of the story is beer. We all like beer. I had a lot of beer this weekend at Halloween parties. Uh, and I also learned a lot of choice uh, cuss words when I was watching this as a kid. But it's all about working together, winning together, and celebrating together. I think we talked about that earlier. Mike mentioned it, about the relationships and, and working together as a group. So, field of dreams. You know, if you build it, they will come. But as CX professionals, you always have to ask, will they come back? Will they stick around, right? Will they rave about their experiences that they have with your product and services? Money bomb. I tell people all the time that Moneyball is probably one of the best digital transformation stories that I've seen in a long time. So it's about Brad Pitt's character, Billy Bean, the coach of the A's. Uh, yeah, the A's. And uh, he meets Jonah Hill. And they start talking about using analytics to, you know, really compete against the, the higher paid players and the larger teams and how can they be competitive? Again, another worst to first kind of story. But I have to tell you guys, it's not always about the analytics, right? It's an important part. Don't throw things at me, you kind of analytical data guys. Which is true. We need that analytics. But we also need the relationship. You need to build the relationships. And uh, I had a friend of mine, uh, Ted Rubin. He says this thing to me and, and to others. It's like, return on relationships. Um, so that's kind of resonated with me over the last couple of years. Um, so Primerica is, has been built on relationships, and it still is. We strive to be a client-led, data insights, insights-driven, fast-connected company. So, so when you're standing up a CX practice, design thinking practice, we talked about that earlier, you got to step up to the plate and get social. You got to get out and meet with people. You have to have that dialogue. You got to point to those goals and objectives. And how do you get there? How do you stay true? How do you then listen and focus? You got to go talk to people. Understand what are the pain points. What are their pain points? What are the client's pain points? Who are we solving for? What's the problems that we're solving for? And really get laser focused. Uh, really go out and try to meet with people and go on and kind of make that connection. Making a connection at the very beginning is going to be the first thing that you should do. 
So next, I tell people all the time on my team, is like, look, I just want you to get on base. I don't need you to step up to the plate and try to hit a home run every time, because you're going to strike out sometimes, right? I just need you to get on base. When you're on base, people see you on base. Get your teammates to kind of get you to circle around the bases and get back to home plate. Get emotional. Get people excited. Go talk to them again. You know, just kind of make that bond. Uh, a friend of mine, when he saw this slide, he says, like, you know, I love this, this slide of, uh, with uh, um, Bill Durham, uh, Bull Durham, and it's about this veteran catcher going out talking to the rookie and trying to gain him and guide him through the system to be a better player and to gain that trust and that credibility. So that really resonated with me re recently. We talked about this earlier. Go out and host a design thinking session or a design sprint. Get people involved in the early, in the very beginning. Get, him, get them really excited about what you're doing across the organization. So it's a process. Um, I on the phone the other day with a Forrester colleague, and he was telling me, like, hey, you know, it took me six years to build out my CX practice. It's not going to happen overnight. So you really need to kind of, it could take a year, it could take three years, it could take six years. You really need to do a couple of things. And that's really to kind of get out, create some small wins, look at the results, point back to those results. And we said this earlier too, it's like be a really good storyteller. Be an educator. Help people understand the process and why is it important for them. Go out and get social again. Stay social. Be a promoter. I have this post-it on my wall in my office. It says, it's a, it's a process, be patient. And whenever I get frustrated and I get a little, you know, okay, I'm, uh, I'm not really sure where we're going with this, I look back and it's just a reminder to me. So by now you should be on a scoring uh, position. You really need to get your, your, your advocates, your, your brand ambassador, your internal brand ambassadors, and, you're, and people say, like, you have a fan club. I'm like, well, I work really hard at it because I'm out there being social, promoting what we do and all the great things. But get people behind you. Get them to kind of get you back to home base. So who remembers Sid Bream? Come on, you got to, right? So when I came here for the very first time in Atlanta in the 90s, early 90s, mid-90s, something like that, I was watching this game, and this, you know, Sid Bream was not the fastest. He was not the best ball player, but what was he able to do? He was able to get on base. And his teammates ran him, got him around to home plate. And in this case, it's the slider, right, the famous slider. And basically what it did was reunited the entire city. People got excited again. It didn't matter who you were, your background, the money that you had in the bank, it unified the city. People got excited. When, he, when they won that game, you could just hear this roar, this, this cheer across the city. That's what you need to do within your organization. And practice, 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 and repeat that. So working together, everybody wins. That's you, that's your peers, your teammates, your stakeholders, and most importantly, your clients. So having a precise dialogue, this is a methodology that I've used throughout my, uh, well, at least the last 10 years. And it's basically you plan, you go out, you figure out your game plan, you listen to your, the people internally, and also go out and listen to your client pain points. Get laser focused on what you're trying to do. Don't forget, forget about all the noise that's around you, but you know, really stay focused on what you're doing and get connected. Uh, Making the connections is really easy. Maintaining and establishing a relationship is not. So precise dialogue, come to me after it. I would love to talk to you more about that. So at the end of the day, you know, it's all about stopping, running the bases. But you, sometimes you have to stop and really celebrate your wins and your successes as a group throughout the entire process. So you really want to kind of get other people excited and they will then be your champions. Oh, so there we go, fireworks. 
Uh, so <laughs> my last thing I want to point out to you, if you're not in the game, you're not going to win, right? And let the game come to you because guess what? It's a process, it's a process, it's a process. So be patient. Thank you.